Thursday, September 10th budget meeting with a few other items. First thing on the agenda is I've got to read a proclamation for the National Assisted Living Week. September 13th to the 19th. Whereas residents of assisted living communities are active members of the large community, offering their knowledge, life experience, and involvement. Their past contributions continue to be a vital part of Cross Lakes Rich history, and their ongoing participation deepens the city's identity. And whereas assisted living is a critical long-term care option for older adults and individuals with disabilities that foster choice, dignity, and independence. Assisted living communities are committed to excellence, innovation, and the advancement of pre-centered care. And whereas in 1995, the National Center for Assisted Living established National Assisted Living Week to honor the contributions of assisted living communities in providing long-term care to America's seniors and individuals with disabilities, and whereas this year's theme of the National Assisted Living Week is caring is essential, highlights the incredible care provided by essential caregivers in assisted living facilities across the country. And whereas during this week, the special week, assisted living communities across the country are encouraged to organize activities and events which celebrate the dedication of staff, the individuality of residents, and the deep connection formed in these settings, while adhering to the COVID-19 safety requirements and precautions. And now, therefore, I, Dave Nevin, do hereby proclaim this week of September 13th to the 19th, 2020, as Assisted Living Week in the City of Cross Lake. I urge all citizens to virtually visit or call a loved one, family member, or friend residing in any care setting and offer a kind word and spend time participating in various virtual activities to unite those from all walks of life in need of our loving, continued love and support and to learn more about the assisted living services benefits of the community. I believe that we I move we authorize the mayor to sign the proclamation for a National Assisted Living Week. I second. Okay, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. The document is signed. I have a further second. I sign this one, just in the event. Okay. Number three. Pardon? I got you. Good. There is there one? <laughs> Number three, recommendation from Public Works Commission to raise sewer usage rates from fifty per month to fifty-two dollars a month. You want to say anything to that, Ted? The commission were unanimously in favor and all voted. The commission were all were unanim unanimously in favor and all voted yes to go forward with the, that raise. Yep, and actually the two dollars probably maybe keeps up with the cost of living increase, huh? I mean, we discussed that a little bit. Yep, it doesn't hardly. But is there any other questions from anybody on that? If you guys want to. So I support the increase to $52, dollars no? Yep. Yep. Yes. Who yes. motion? Well, there isn't a motion, right, Char? You're going to do a resolution. Okay, that carries. Number four, review quote from truck bodies and equipment, the international dump truck with plow for public works. I can put it up here, Ted. Oh, you got it? Okay. So the $212,610.05. I'm sorry. 
The two hundred and twelve thousand six hundred and ten dollars and five cents is the. That's the truck, the plow, the frame, all the computers, the lights, okay. the bells and whistles to make it work. We still have to put on the the device that measures the. No, nope, that's all part of that. That's all part of it. Yep. Okay. And then the, you remember we did have the um, sown water offered us ten thousand to take and offset the that controller. So. And this will replace the Mac truck? Uh, right now, I think it's probably been our best interest just to keep them and look, run them until there's nothing left. There's okay. just not a lot of value well, there. But anymore. I mean, as far as on the street. Yeah. What we what I'm thinking was doing, and rather than when we like when we go pick up trees, okay. rather take the new truck out and load trees and it's done and dinging it and making it hard on it. Take the old truck, yeah. put gotcha. the wear and tear on it, so we save the new truck for other things. Didn't, didn't you talk twenty thousand before for salt, or was that? Was it twenty or ten? Twenty. Minor okay, twenty shot. then. So we, I don't remember. So. Oh, okay. That's almost a week ago now. I can't remember that far back. <laughs> yeah, we need to confirm that because she was yes. still looking at. She it was twice. checking on it. Yep. So, but it's two hundred and twelve is the base price. So the base price of that truck is one hundred and seventeen. Set up the way it needed is another ninety five. Brings it up to. The well, the base. truck is ninety five and the equipment is one hundred and seventeen. Okay. That's for a Western 2000 or 2020 Western Star. Single axle? Yes. Single axle. I don't think we and could turn a tandem axle around on our roads. Yeah, all your trucks are single axle. Yes. So what are we authorizing here? Ted, are you asking to purchase that yet this year while it's still available? Right now, the truck is available. This is a demo. They have, they sold one of them. Or the mission bought one of them to the south of us. There's this one and one other Western Star available for this year. And this will come under our, our uh, equipment certificates. Well, we'd have to issue equipment certificates or pay cash for it. I mean, you're kind of right on the bubble of doing that for the for the price because you're going to get it for around 200,000 yes. roughly so if, if you decide to do this you know I'd like authorization to come back with the proposal for the financing with the equipment certificates okay is this a demo or state under the state contract bid? this is a demo under the state contract yeah. there's 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 80 some pages we didn't give you all 80 some pages for the the truck and another 80 pages for the the uh, box and all the tools but yeah that's all part of the state contracting I think one of them even says state contract on the top of the the wording there so so is there a bearing on the it's a demo or is this a state contract bid? it's state contract it's a demo under the state contract or it's a, a demo truck they set it up underneath the state contracting pricing but it's not used a new truck. It's a new no. truck. It's got a few miles on it from driving it back and forth to show everybody. So, I recommend we go ahead and get the truck. Okay, we got a motion by Andrew. I'll second, second that. And a second. A little discussion at the last meeting we had talked about. I, I think it was Park and Rec had in the budget this year fifty thousand for a truck that we hadn't settled on, and then I think it was fifty thousand for a blacktop repair trailer unit under public works there was money in there for, it was 51,000 for a pickup and there was another uh, to replace the sand or the sweeper 40,000 or the sweeper that was in this year's budget we were just going to carry it over into next year's or we, we do have the price in today of for 51,000 to buy the pickup also that's the next item on your right. agenda right so there's 40000 for the sweeper, but there was another thing that the hot, the trailer with the hot <coughs> burner. Water truck. Water, water truck was the other one. Replace the water truck. Well, there was something about blacktop repair, too. Hot mix. Hot mix. Yeah, the you had a hot mix trailer, trailer that you wanted to. And that was, that was in the in the 2021's budget. I don't think it was in the 2020 or 19 budget. I'd have to go back and look. It's, the numbers are getting confusing now. 
Well, I mean, if we're going to prove this thing, though, and then I guess we've got to look at each thing as it comes up, I mean, I, I think you need a truck. Yes. But I don't know if we need a pickup, and I don't know if we need a house batch plant for the blacktop. And, I mean, I want to talk about those things. What was the water truck? What did you have budgeted for the water truck? We had, it's either 40 or 45,000, I don't remember. It's 45. 45. What we currently have is an old Mack fire truck that uh, John Moingen purchased for when he was on the city council. He purchased for us. Um, it had been a good truck, but it's starting to really nickel and dime. We can't keep it on the road, keep it running. Is that the one that rolled over up on the corner there? No, that was the International. That's what replaced the... Fire truck that was? That was the old, old fire truck. That was an old, almost milk truck, I think it was. You remember that one, Tom? When the master cylinder went on it? So the 2021, the, the blacktop trailer heat batch plant thing was in the, is in the 2021 budget. That's what you're putting that in. That's what I plan to. And the sweeper and the water truck are in last year's budget that you didn't do. We anything. haven't been able to find the the a water truck to replace the current one. The, there's two. I'm not trying to buy a brand new one. The new one is over a hundred thousand dollars for water truck. And all I was trying to do is find some city that had a used one that was in good shape that we could purchase. And there was two of them that came available and they were snatched up right away and we never even heard about them until it was too late. So that's what we've been trying to do is just have money available when one came available. So, and I get the concept of nickel diming, but how much would it take you to keep the water truck running for a couple more years? You know, I'm kind of guessing at some point if you spend 5,000 bucks and you get two years or something, you know, I don't know how often you use it. I'm not you know, sometimes it might be cheaper to just maintain the thing for the use that you get. I don't know. So. Part of it is the air brakes on this thing, yeah. and you're probably t over $10,000. Anything else? Does uh, it leak water? No, the tank is still solid. What do you use it for? We use it for flushing sewers, for washing bridge decks, washing off roads, watering trees, water washing water. the flooding the rinks, um, washing off the tennis courts, the pickleball now will be... You know, sometimes if you buy somebody else's used stuff, you're going to get something you don't know is wrong with it. And, you know, I don't know, 10000 is better than you, you, you 50 end up, You end up fixing the, the other one if it's used. Right, right. So, you know, and I don't know that you should be shameful of spending money to fix a truck if you think the rest of it's good, if it has a good engine. like. Seems to have a good engine and well, transmission. It goes down the road fine. I don't know. That's just my, you know... Sometimes it's better to fix something. And so are the air brakes not working now, or do they just need? They, we can't keep them, the pressure on the air brakes. The, the, the whole system is just kind of uh, holes in, in the, all of the airlines that run, because there's, there's airlines that don't just run to the brakes, they run to all the valves that you flip a valve and this, val, this water uh, spigot opens on the tank, and all that stuff has got... Leaks here and there. We got vice grips whole, pinching things shut to. Okay, but and you got a quote for ten grand to fix that, or you're just guessing? That? I'm guessing. I don't. Like I said, I haven't looked into it. We were. I was of the mindset we'd just replace. But if if that's what you want to do, I can look into it more and get firmer pricing. Well, I would just assume you look into that more for sure. But I would. I I would think that. So even if you tried to get rid of it, it it's, the brakes are bad. That's a safety issue. It's going to take any value of the truck away from it, so we're not going to get anything for it. There anyway. isn't much there trading value the way it sits today. Yeah, but for 10000 if we can get, like Dave says, a couple more years, I think I would... I the would, tank has got an epoxy-coated tank on it. It's, it isn't rusting through. It's holding up. It looks good. Yeah. And you had 45. That's a carryover from last year for that truck. So we could apply 35 of that towards your plow truck. Yep. I mean, it's already money in the bank, right? Yep, you could apply that money to it towards it. And what kind of sweeper do you have? I mean, these things are all kind of intertwined. What we have right now is we have a Roscoe front-mounted broom sweeper that we use to sweep off the streets. Um, what the um, dealer is telling us, the current Roscoe that we were going to go and purchase is... 
it has issues. It's not worth us buying a new one. We have a better unit than purchasing what they have available today. They have a bunch of issues they had to work through on from hydraulics to engines and overheating problems they were having. So, What is it drawn to, Ted? It's, it has it self-propelled. It has its own engine, a John Deere engine on it that's self-propelled broom. You've seen the county's got one, we've got one. So that's what the proposed is, or that's what you currently have? That's what we currently have, and we would replace, trade this one in and, and go to a new one, so. so. So just to clarify, so we understand what we're doing here. In the 2020 budget, we had budgeted 50,000 to replace the sweeper, 51,000 for a pickup truck, and $45,000 to replace the water truck, okay? So partway through the year, we reallocated the pickup truck for $51,000 to offset some of the cost on Perkins Road. That's right. So then we put it in the budget for 2021 to buy the pickup truck in 2021. So what that leaves us with for a budget for 2020 is we could replace the sweeper for 50 and we could replace the water truck for 45. Now the question we raised at the last meeting was 2021 is going to change depending on what decision you make on the sweeper or the um, pickup truck. So if you, if you go ahead and you buy the pickup truck this year, then we'll take it out of next year and we'll offset it with uh, one of these other pieces of equipment. So depending on what you do, it'll change the mix for 2021. So just make sure you understand that, all right? What, uh, Mike, what about the miscellaneous uh, equipment? You got snow bucket on there and there's 21,000 in there yet. That hasn't been spent this year. No, I think you had a, a rake or something in there too, Ted? Yeah, there's a, there's a rake and there's a couple other pieces that don't, are not reflected on there, I don't think yet, but one of them was to replace one of the mowers and the mowers worked out well this year so we just didn't move forward with the purchase rather than buying something we were... So you haven't spent the 20000 I haven't spent the 20000 as of yet. No. And you don't intend to? Right now, today, everything's working fine. There's another 20. So, so you could buy the, you could fix the water truck for 10 and use the 20 and the 35 to buy the pickup. Mm -hmm. And you could just buy the, well, the sweeper, it sounds like you don't want to buy anything. Can you fix that? Right now, the the sweep we were it's just it was in its rotation. It, it, oh, every, I see, yeah, but they had a bad batch of they had a, they're having problems with the sweepers. Yeah. Cost reduction program. It, I, I I can't say to it is just that's we were, how it happens. If it was recommended that we don't purchase a sweeper, so well, what do you think you can get by with it next year I with some repairs? It'll, it'll, you know, it'll if we leave some money, well, you got. And we don't know if there's, if there even the next year's, is the, the issues are even worked out. We haven't heard. So that was in the 2020, so that's carryover sitting in the bank. So maybe we should just leave it sit there. And it looks like we, with this other money that we just talked about, you can fix the water truck brakes and buy the pickup, and that's, it's flat then. As far as public works, yes, then we would yeah. be. Other than the only thing would still be would be the the patch trailer, but right. Sure. So based on what decision you make today on these pieces of equipment, we'll adjust the 2021 budget accordingly. Does that make sense to all of you? Which ones are you robbing? The, well, the they, twenty thousand and the well, 45, you said there's right? twenty for a bucket that he had, you know, that that we've collected funds for. Haven't he doesn't anticipate using it? So you got 20 there, and if we take 10 of the, you know, he hasn't doesn't have an estimate yet, but 10 seems like a healthy number. 45 yet in there for the water truck. So if you take the remaining 35 and the 10, you got more than enough to buy the. How much was the pickup? I don't even. So there's some money there. So it, you, we could shuffle some things around and make it all come out. Did I miss what we're doing with the sweeper? We're putting that in capital project fund, or 
He's just going to leave that money sit there in the event that he has to fix the one he has. Okay. Or if they come up with something that's better. So that's going in that capital projects fund and designate for sweeper. Well, we would assign fund balance for that. We wouldn't put a separate fund for a small piece of equipment. The capital projects fund would be limited to a project, not a specific piece of equipment. But I thought you could total it up and subtotal, like the sweeper 50. And we already do that, and we have a list of that. Um, but I think we made a motion the last time, and it was approved. You still have to follow GAP, um, and that would not be following it to do that. We'd have to do something different. We're already doing that in the general fund for um, the parks, the police, and a bunch of other things for specific items, and that's what I was talking about. Um, you would only set up a capital projects fund, which we already have, when you have a major project, like uh, you know it has a beginning and an end. Um, like a road project, things like that, bigger things. We already do the things you were requesting in the general fund, and we offered up to provide additional detail um, to clear up what was in there and what was not in there. That's already been approved by the council, and it's already listed in the audited financials. But if you did that, you wouldn't have it in the budget in 2021 if it's carried over from 2020. Right, and budget. what we also stated earlier was the decisions you make today on these pieces of equipment will determine what we do with 2021. We'll make an adjustment for that. So we have to decide what to do with the truck and then we'll adjust those accordingly. And then the council can decide if they want to assign those or not. Well, we've got the truck to talk about. We've yep. got the blacktop machine to talk about. Yeah, yep. two out of these items. So can we move through those and then go back and recap them all, I think is what we want to do. Yeah, we can do that. But I so, guess the, the decision for today is you're basically swapping out sorry, the pickup truck for the sweeper is what you're doing. And then you could address the sweeper in the budget next year. Because remember, earlier this year, we reassigned... Um, $51,000 for the pickup truck to pay for uh, the, the balance of Perkins Road. So that leaves you, you're, you're really swapping out the, if you're going to go with the pickup truck, you'd swap the pickup truck out for the sweeper, then you'd decide whether or not you want to buy a sweeper next year, and you'd budget accordingly for it. And then that leaves you with the 21000 about $21,000 for stuff you didn't buy, plus the um, water truck at 45. So you'd need to decide what you want to do with the water truck or assign that for capital, or you could, you could make that decision once you know what you want to do. There is a motion at the end of second to go ahead with this. Yep. That was item four. Okay, but it hasn't died yet. We haven't approved it yet. That's why we're... Right. Yeah. I'm just reminding you we need it. Can I, can I ask what the motion actually says? You said there was a motion on it. I'm sorry. Yeah. It was made by John um, Andrews, and you seconded and it. And I seconded it, yeah. To go ahead <laughs> with this purchase at 212,910 So we, we need to vote is what it is. Well, that's where that. And along with that, are the counties gonna reimburse us for the salt delivery system? We were looking at some potential funding in the amount of roughly $20,000 that they'd be willing to look into um, through soil and water conservation on that. And we don't have the answer to that yet. That's a maybe, okay. I did try to call the last three minutes if it was possible. I got something that I got to bring up that's going to probably hit a nerve. 
but I'm going to bring it up anyway. When you, when we get a new $200,000 plow truck, is that issued to a driver or is that just an open jump in the truck and go kind of a rig? How, how what's the... Uh... I tried to assign a driver to that truck. It doesn't mean that he's going to be in it all the time, but I tried to assign a driver to that truck. So he takes care of it, takes pride in it. I mean, I think that's important to do. Yes. I have the person in mind already for the truck, so. I just, you know, looking at this curb and looking at some things that happen around here, I think there needs to be a little accountability somehow, and we can maybe discuss that at a different time, but I think we need to keep track of who's doing what. This is a big investment. Yes, it is. So I, I think they need a plow truck. Should we just move forward with that and address these other issues as they come up? But I think we have a motion yep. in a second. So we, so we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. But now I think we've got to take a look at these other things. And so I, I do have a follow-up question with the plow truck. Did, is it my understanding you want me to look into a five-year certificate to finance that, or did you just want to pay for it? You've got the option to do either. Would that depend on what all we want to do? Would it be a bigger certificate if we grouped everything together? You could group multiple pieces of equipment under one certificate, yes. So maybe we should wait and go through this thing and see where we end up and then decide sure, how to do it. Sure, we can do that. Huh? Okay. Okay, so we're on item five. On okay, number agenda. five is re View quote from Carl Chevrolet 2021 Silverado pickup for public works. This year we were going to use the 51,000 and that's, oh, I'm sorry. This year we're gonna use the money from, and that's what the money Mike was talking about, we reallocated towards the Perkins Road project. Because early on, the state had purchased all available um, trucks for the year, it, it used up the allocation. The state had gone back and renegotiated and got another dealer to come up with more pickup trucks. So then I was looking at, is it possible to get the truck or put the truck in the 2021 year because we've already used the money this year. This is the quote for a 2021 Silverado. Okay, so what's the purpose of that truck? Just another truck? Right now, no, right now we have a, the truck it would be replacing, we have a 2007 GMC three quarter ton four wheel drive pickup that is a, one of our utility trucks that we use for pulling the lawnmowers and the bobcat and the um, mini X on the on the trailer. Um, it has all the tools right on in the utility box. You've seen it, a white truck. It was a, a hand-me-down from the phone company. She's sitting at about 131,000 today. Is what old trucks do you have in the public works now, Ted? What do you have? I have the one that I currently drive is a 2016 GMC. We have a 2000 and, or a 2007 Ford one ton with a little dump body on it. That's that blue Ford. We have what we call the crane truck that goes for lift pulling out lift station pumps. That is a 2018 and I'm missing one. Oh, the 2017. There's a 2017 pickup also in there. And so what you're proposing to do is to get rid of the GMC, the 07, and replace it with this truck? Yes. And the use for that truck is for pulling trailers? Well, trailers, the, the tools are all in it when we go to do a job for, for everything from hanging signs to... Ted, it looks like you're moving from three quarter to one ton. The reason we went to a one ton pickup is pulling those trailers it really wasn't enough at times, especially when you're pulling a bobcat at 10,000 pounds or the little mini-axe at about 12.5. 
It didn't have much stopping power with that, and they're just a little more heavy duty and with the one ton. So you're saying safety issue is kind of a key here? Part of it, yes. But so right now you got five trucks, you got four employees, including yourself. Yep. That one, the one ton is our utility truck where we, you know, you need a little jagged dirt here or you've got to uh, uh, put pure salt on a spot. Um, the, the salt goes in the back of that rather than the uh, mixed and it's kind of a general truck for a little bit of everything from plowing snow to repairing ditches and Okay, well, I think we're all struggling pretty hard with trying to figure out how to tighten the ship up a little bit. This is a crew cab, one ton pickup. Yep. A lot of the tools are in the, our, you know, our, our uh, battery operated drills, the uh, stuff that we've, uh, you don't want freezing in the back of the truck in the winter time, the sprays and all that stuff. It's in a tote in the back seat. Uh, the two gentlemen that uh, utilize these trucks happen to be our, our, our fire department. They're, part of their medical bags are with them, so if they do get a call when they're out and about, they can uh, help with that or assist with that, so. Okay. Just gonna ask a dumb question. Is this, again, Going back to the fixing trucks, how bad is this truck? If we just I, had to have the TJ, I'm sorry, but you know, would it fit your bill, or is it just shot? When the the, the last thing we just had to do to it was the doors started falling off. We had to go in and to Shannon's auto body and have the doors rewelded back into the frames. The the um, hinges that just broke totally broke loose inside. Right. That's the things that are starting to happen to it. That's so. the 07 GMC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're talking about. It was well used when we got it from the phone company anyway. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. And we won't be able to use the uh, tool. There's, there's a tool bed. Different on the back, yeah. back end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll move. We go ahead and, and uh, pick this up out of this year's budget. So that's going to go on the equipment list. I'll second that. Possibly. And can we talk about stuff now? Sure. Just Isn't one of the options that we could use for this is, there are two options we could lump it on an equipment certificate, maybe, right? Well, in this case. Or not. You could, but you've already levied the money and you're not buying a sweeper. So rather than borrow money and pay interest on it, you might as well just swap the sweeper out for the truck that was yeah because i made a note here to use the thirty-five thousand left over from the water truck after we fixed the brakes for 10. Mm -hmm. and then what where did you find in the budget that you had a bucket or something in there for 20 or twenty-one thousand that you don't think you'll need so was it? it was called miscellaneous but oh, okay. what it was is there's um when we're picking up the trees in that we utilize a clam bucket and that was the big purchase for the loader. We were going to put a clam bucket on the, onto the loader. Since that time, I had to go back to my notes and read what I had written down, what that was for. But what we were going to do is purchase a, a clam bucket for, this, for the loader that, to pick up the trees and all the debris that happens when we... And since that time, we started using our mini X, and it works much well, better than going down, driving down into the ditch and tearing the ditch up and pulling the dust. The mini X picks it up and sets it in the truck a whole lot friendlier okay. and it's working better. So that's why that money hadn't been utilized this year. So. so we can, like Mike said, it's probably smarter just to use that money to pay for this. Mm -hmm. Ted, was a Mini X which you were using on Manhattan Point Boulevard the other week? Yes, it was. That looked very neat. Thanks. It's, we're working from the road and not getting down the ditch and tearing it up when it's wet. and. So this is going to be a wash using the 2020 budgeted sweeper money and we're going to apply it to this truck. Yes, sir. And that would change your whole budget for 2021. You know, the, the other thing you might want to consider instead of issuing debt for this now 
is if you choose not to do the um, water truck, you leave a little bit for repairs, you know, that gets you down. If you have some money from soil and water conservation for the salt, that gets your truck down to under $150,000, which kind of makes it a, should I borrow it or should I just dip into my reserves and pay for it to know that I did that? Um, I mean, you're, it costs money to borrow money, is the point. And when you, when you get down to that sub 200 level where we're getting without having other equipment on there, you know, it just makes that vehicle that more expensive. You, I mean, rates are, are next to less than 1%. So it, it doesn't make sense to borrow money at a, at a higher rate to, to pay for it when you're not getting anything for your money right now for smaller items like that. I mean, if you were in that six or 700000 or $800,000 range, well, then, yeah, that's a different story. Right. But for, for smaller items, you're, you're better off just to budget appropriately. Some years you'll spend more, some years you won't for it and keep track of it that way. So, Ted, this is a one-ton crew cab pickup for 42.9. Actually, that seems kind of reasonable to me. Well, if you look at it, that was 42.9 for the pickup and the frame. The utility box on it, if you turn that over, it, was 40, it comes up to 47000 Yeah, $47,080. Like I said, I wish I could buy them for that price. It's all part of the state contracting. They have the snow plowing package already in them, which is the bigger alternator and the bigger transmission coolers and all those things have been added in that part of that program. What's the WT convenience package for 1185 bucks? What is that? I'd have to go back specifically and look at it. It might be the, where the, the wiring... The wider mirrors, the bigger mirrors for seeing around the trailer and something That's else. I don't remember. Package. These are all just sitting on the lot someplace. They, I mean, they make several of the same model. What he told us is that uh, most of these trucks already have been made or in the process of being made, and he would have the trucks to us in about 40 days. Ted, are you planning to put a plow on this one too, or purchase a plow, or trade a plow on it? And what are you going to put on the front of it? We'll probably move the plow that's on my pickup, the older pickup, to this truck. Okay. Okay. And do what? Get a new one for your truck then? No, I probably wouldn't. You know, mine is getting older now. It's got 75,000 miles on it. It's plowed pretty hard, and it's earlier in its life. We would use the newer trucks for that, that are built a little tougher now and mine's only a three quarter ton we didn't have a we didn't go to the one ton back then so okay okay so we need a motion on this have one we've got one have one have one and we're going to use the sweeper money to pay for a good portion of it Okay. Motion in the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Council, thank you. Greatly appreciate you. You're up. Okay. So Chip's going to talk a little bit about a request we got from the state of Oregon. And we got this at about, what, 11.30 today? 11 o'clock or something like that? Yeah, so you know, um, the fires out west are getting pretty bad. We had a request about three weeks ago for the California um, fires requesting wildland strike teams. We were unable to fulfill that request. Today we received a request at 11 o'clock this morning from the Oregon Office of the State of Fire Marshal, an EMAC uh, request, and an EMAC request is an Emergency Management Assistant Compact. Basically it's a mutual aid agreement between states, legally binding contractual agreement. 
State requesting assistance are responsible for reimbursing out-of-state costs and liable for out-of-state personnel. So what they're looking for is structural protection teams. Basically, they have some wildfires out in Oregon. I don't know if you watch the news. Even the incident commander says they're not even trying to put the fire up because they don't have resources. They're just trying to evacuate areas to get people out of the, out of the way. Um, so this request came to the state fire marshal and, and um, our HSCM down in St. Paul, and I'm a regional director, so it came to me, and then I sent it out to basically the northern half of the state to see if we have any um, people interested in going. So I'm, right now, I have some fire personnel that are interested in going, along with one of our pieces of apparatus. And what we do, I need to get a council approval for that. And what happens after that is I submit it to the state. The state negotiates with Oregon on a contractual price of per hour. And right now they're working two to one um, shifts, so they're working 16 hours and then eight hours off. So you get paid 16 hours of work time on a piece of apparatus and personnel and mode time. And uh, we've done this before back in 1987, Tom, do you remember? 86, when Yellowstone was burning. We sent out our tender three um, with two people, I believe, and um, when they got back, they ended up getting enough funding from being out there for two weeks to purchase our old engine 10. So right now, my rough guesstimate is around about $187,000 we might come get for going out there. Don't quote me on that, I just because we haven't negotiated the contract yet. But if it all falls in place, that would be an opportunity to raise some funds and give my personnel incredible opportunity for an experience that they've never seen in their lifetime. How many would you let go? Or just just many, one. Just one individual? Yeah, it would either be our tender four or our engine two. How many individuals? How many people? Oh, it would either be two or four. And you've got interest from them to do that? Yep, I have the trucks full already. Mm, that's great. <laughs> And you don't know really how long they're going toward it. Um, yes, it's actually on that sheet. It's a 15-day it's a deployment. Chip, a question. How beat up do our trucks get by going out? In the long, it's a long way to Oregon. It all depends on where they go, so I can't say it's perfect roads. And in here it says you have to be able to go on a minimum maintenance road. Gotcha. You know, that's, but you're not going off-road. There's a road because they won't put these trucks, because they have to pay for it. If it fails, they have to pay for it. You know, if it wrecks or they, it sinks or breaks, they have to pay for it. Thanks. So they can't put us in a situation to fail. Which truck are you talking to? Engine, say? engine two, or tender four. Either or. It, well, it depends on how. Uh, right now, I'm in the middle of planning on our strike team. They're looking for ten strike teams, which is five engines each strike team throughout the state. So depending on who else commits, will determine where our needs are. Whether it's going to be an engine or a tender. Do you feel pretty good that we have personnel still here in case we have a oh, big yeah. fire too? Oh, All yeah. Right. Yep. Just the, thanks. Yep. I'm looking at the one that says that they may have to quarantine before even deployment. That is if you're not if you if you have any symptoms and do we do we're we, all good. Yeah. Do we have staff that could yep. take that kind of time from their families? Yes, they've already committed to it. They know they would be leaving on Saturday or Sunday. But if they catch it out there, yeah, then they have to quarantine before they come back. So basically, I'm looking for council approval to be able to release the truck and personnel under contract with the state of Oregon if it all falls in place. And I'll make that, that motion. This happens really fast. Like, we'd have to know by tomorrow. So what actually, would be our liability? The city's there liability. isn't. Like I read in here, uh, EMAC is all liability goes under the state that requests it. I'll make the motion. We approve your request immediately. Thank you. Okay, we got a motion. I'll second it. Second. Any other question? Or did I get exactly what the motion was? Because the echoing. Oh. Is it to release a fire truck and personnel? Yeah. En engine two or tender four. Correct. Either one, two or four guys for 14 days. That's what he. F Fifteen. 15 days. It may even be 17 because they don't have uh, mob time out to Oregon. Yeah. How often would you anticipate something like this? How, how long? How often? Um, it happens once in a while. We had it 
earlier, like, like I said this year, we were thinking about taping, taking our grass rig, but we couldn't fill the requirements. Um, it usually happens maybe once every 10, 15 years. Oh, that's pretty, pretty infrequent. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the California, what's going on in California, Oregon, Washington right now. And all of a sudden I could see fire truck heading out there and that's not absurd because we sent fire trucks down to uh, yep. New Orleans in that area after the, after the big floods. And last year I was ready to go to Dorian, so we had a, we didn't get council approval I think because I left that day they called us, right? Mm -hmm. But we signed a proclamation because we didn't take any equipment. It was just me personally. So it's, under the state EMAC, or national EMAC request, it can happen in a second, but that's why they have 14 day deployment. You can't go any longer than that. And they okay. send you home. Whoops, sorry. Okay. So who pays the people for going out there? Uh, the state of Oregon requests a probably a declaration of uh, disaster, disaster declaration with the federal government. So they get their money from them and then they pay us. But we have a contract with Oregon. So that's where the contract would be. And that's the 187? Somewhere around there. Somewhere yeah, don't quote me on that. that I have no idea what that's going to be. Did I, did I hear right that that the state assumes the liability? The, the state that's requesting the assistance, so that'd be the state of Oregon, takes on liability once we leave Minnesota. So once I go on 94 past Fargo, it's their responsibility of personnel and equipment. So there is, I mean, as long as there's no liability to the city or something. We got a motion on a second, is that true? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, it's payroll, personnel, everything. So Chip, yeah. that includes executing That's, the appropriate documents? Yep, I'll have all the documents time. and then you'll have to, somebody will have to sign them as soon as the contract's negotiated. And that's not, well, I'm not the only one going. There's probably 30, 40 departments from the city, the state that's going, so. Yeah. Okay, so all in favor to approve? Aye. 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 Motion, motion. Thank you. What else we got? I'm sorry, what was that? Was that number six or was that a throw in between that five was a, and six? That was a that was a lead off to number six. Sure. Okay, then I'm sorry. So what was this one? Where does that go? He's continuing with this. Yeah, okay. But this is that okay. is number seven. Five. Seven. Seven. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Do you have, uh, in your packet, you had a, some information regarding aerial apparatus and purchase uh, buyer's guide, just some information in regards to the aerial apparatus. Do you have any questions, or if you had time to read through that, comments? When was the I, last I a, ISO rating? Excuse me? When was the last ISO rating? 2017. They come every, every five years? Now it's or? five years, yep. It used to be 10, now they dropped it to five. How is this going to affect? Can you guess to me, and I understand the word guess, how this would affect my homeowner's insurance or our business community? Um, my best guess, if I, we uh, purchase this aerial apparatus and then the next time the ISO does their review, uh, it, it may get us down to a five, um, which would help the businesses a lot more than residential. It may be 20, 30, it all depends on the insurance company because some don't even look at ISO. So I'm gonna be honest with you, some don't even look at it. Um, if we go the other direction and they come, we don't have a, aerial apparatus, it may go back up to a seven, eight, seven, eight, maybe, maybe even higher, depends, because they have not done their field review in over 15 years, which could definitely hurt our area, because once they see the amount of, of buildings and, that we have in, 
town since they looked last time. So they don't go out and do a review unless the insurance company asks them to do a review of the structure. So to answer your question, I really can't. You'd have to ask your insurance company the exact amount, but it is the savings. As you lower your ISO, the savings to the insurance is much is cheaper. I'm not going to say much. It all depends on the situation. But our community definitely would oh, see yes. a, a break from it. That's, yes. what I, that's what I'm concerned about. Yes. I remember when council discussed this a year or two ago, um, it was a pretty good difference in price for various things depending on the ISA rating. It was much more than I expected, but it was big at that time. Yeah, and I know the commercial side of things is a lot more than, especially within the five mile area from the fire hall, it is a considerable uh, savings. What is the ISO rating? We're a six. Six? Right? Yeah, six. I've looked at too many numbers today. <laughs> yeah, we were we were a seven, and then we got dropped down to a six in 2017. Or was that 18? I think it was a pretty good document you packaged here. And I, the last couple of days when I drive through town, I've started noticing some of the size of the buildings. You know, and they're not like you're in downtown Minneapolis. But to what this document said and to what you said about shoving ladders up and trying to, you know, and I know the senior place, let me switch gears, that's sprinkled. But what if you have to get somebody out of there and you can't go down the hallway and you got to get somebody out a window that's up how many right. floors? Three? You, you can't do Three that stars. on a ladder. Right, and one of the things that I want to comment on your statement about driving through the cities, you have to remember what type of construction those are too. The, down in the cities, they're not going to burn because right. they're all concrete and metal. Ours are all wood. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the thing, you, you really have to look around and uh, see the buildings and go on different roads and see what you're looking at. Because I know uh, this is the, I have this spreadsheet here from ISO that sent me back in 2017. And these are the buildings that they had on here and how they figure out some of their ratings. You know, how many buildings are over 10,500 square feet, depending on your needed fire flow rate of. 3,500 gallons per minute. And they only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine buildings in there. And they don't have the school, they don't have, well, I have it on my sheet over here, the charter school, cross tech, wilderness park storage, the log church, cross lake storage, town square, evergreen villas, the Lutheran church, the Catholic church, Sandpoint villas, Dagobert villas, Sundance Ridge, CNC Bowworks, Pineview Town Homes, Lands in Whitefish Lodge, Pine Peaks, none of them are even on their list. So that's what I mean. If they come back here and actually drive through town, I'm nervous. Because, like it says in the ISO, um, fire departments must have an aerial ladder if the response area has five or more buildings or three stories high, of three stories high, 32 feet or more in height ground to eaves, or with five buildings that have needed fire flow greater than 3,500 gallons per minute, or, or with at least five buildings, meaning combination of those. So five, we have 25. So that's 10,500 square feet of building. But back to your other statement about the ladders and on roofs, and you know, you got some of these walkouts two-story that are 35 feet in the air, and the chimney's on that side, and you're gonna have to figure out how to get there, maybe only one or two stories on the road side, but now some of you, a lot of these houses have steel roofs. I'm not putting a guy on a steel roof, mm -hmm. especially in the wintertime or when it's cold or rainy. The ladder can go right up to that wherever we need it to go, so that's a good point. But that's one of my issues right now. That's why I don't like putting people on the roofs right well, now. And, it, and it's said in here, your ladders are not the same as the ladder I might have. No, they're heavier. Right. They're a lot heavier. It takes a lot yeah. more people to set up. Yeah. If I have to put out my um, 28 or my 35 foot ladder, it takes four or five guys to do that. And this is kind of a dual purpose truck? Multi-purpose. Multi yep. yeah. Engine, aerial, rescue, it can pretty much do everything. So Chip, the E2 is what one of the rigs going out to Oregon is, I think. It's right? one of the optional rigs. I probably don't want to drive that, but if that's the one that we would take, that would be what the one. What year is that one? That's my 97. 
And the Tender 4, that's not the new one you just got. No, that's a two th Tender 4 is a 2003 Freightliner. So where is the pricing breakdown of this? I don't see that here. Pricing breakdown on? On the ladder truck you're talking about. Um, is there a price in here? I didn't see that. 830 was it? 879 in the budget. Yeah, I don't, I thought I can't give it to you all, but it, the ladder truck is this, the ladder truck, you have a picture of it, if you can turn it sure. sideways, that's 879. And then as I mentioned earlier, the, this is our engine one. This was, we would purchase the same truck if we don't purchase an area. We'd like to purchase this truck because we're on Capital LA. Is, this year was the year to replace it, our engine two. And it would be this truck right here, the same truck as engine one. And right now that price is $630,000, $640,000. Without equipment or anything, any extras like air. I'd have to look at the specs because. Uh, The email that I, I, th I think I gave it to y'all, but it, uh, there's some additional things. So that's why I said that I have it at 650, like air primers or different things that help us with pumping. And then the E1 is 879. And that's a, they call it a demo. Basically they fill slots throughout the whole year in their manufacturing time frame, and they, Slotted one if we wanted to get it. There's one open in February. And what kind of uh, equipment do you have to add to that? Um, so this truck is, we would take a lot of the equipment. We'd take the air packs off of engine two and put them on here. And then we would just need some hose. Um, we have a lot of hose in the, in the apparatus bays that we can just transfer over. Uh, we have a lot of hose on engine two. So basically we got plenty of hose to outfit that. What are you gonna do with engine two? The engine two would be a reserve pumper. And you get points for that for ISO. We'd also use it for relay pumping. Um, I don't want to take it out of service because just in case something does happen to a truck, we have that. And we always need more engines. Whenever we've had fires here, we've used three or four engines with mutual aid and time is of essence. So if we need to relay pump right away, we need, we need that's a good truck to do that. Or if we need to draft out of the lake or our, our dry hydrants, we can use that truck to do that. Because we won't get any money trying to sell it. However, we used it last night, we pumped last night with it, and we have something that went wrong with it today, so I have to get it fixed before, if, if we take that out. <laughs> so that's the truck that's been nickel and dime on us now. So at the last budget meeting, you commented that with a ladder truck, it's going to require a lot more training. Well, it's a new truck. It's not a lot more training, it's just training. We train enough. We, we train two times a month, um, and everybody, it was very, when they had it up here, the guys caught on really quick. Basically, it's two to three classes of, you know, just making sure your, your awareness levels of when you're putting the aerial up. Um, we've got enough driving because the truck's the same size. It's just different strategies and tactics that now we, we can now use that are going to better perform, help us better perform with not as many personnel. So we're going to learn from some people that are very good with that, and that's part of our um, training anyway. Uh, and it's also free through the MBFD, so we wouldn't have to pay any money for that. So you train twice a month now? Twice to three times a month. Okay, I thought it was every Wednesday. No, nope. second and fourth is fire. First Wednesday is EMS, and then if we have a fifth Wednesday, we train fire. Okay, so you're doing something every Wednesday. Now. Except for the third Wednesday. How could, how could I personally, and I think the council would probably be educational to get a breakdown of what the fire department as a whole costs us and what the breakdown of it is? I don't have a clue what we pay the guys. I'm assuming we pay them something, but I don't have a clue. Um, we paid $15 an hour for training and calls. Whatever they're doing? Yes. When they're on duty, it's 15 an hour. Yep, I think you were on the council when we made that. It used to be 10 and went to 15. And
2000. But I don't know what that relates to over a year's time. Well, know? what's the payroll? What's our payroll in there? Um, and this again will be in your budget packet mm -hmm. going back to 2012. So if you look at your budget packet, which is further down on the list there. Number eight. If you look at like start at page 11. So I've got a summary by department. Um, what the fire department costs between operating capital and debt going back to 2012. And this is the same as what's been presented in prior years. So if you, if you want to look at what, what it costs to run the fire department. Um, we can start in 2018. And just recognize that. Um, page 14. Mm -hmm. Mark. Start at page 14. You have actual wages of 2019 of 105,207. Yep. The question I'm trying to answer is what does it cost to run the fire department? Um, so in 2019, 298, 943. You look at 2020, our budget was 251. 14. Page 34. That's where I am. I don't know where he is. Wait a minute. It went down this year compared to last year? Wasn't that 298? Now you just said 251. I'm just looking at the operating side of it, which yeah. is outside of capital and debt. What Marsh is looking at is the detail um, budget report in the back of the file. I'm just looking at the, the total cost. So in 20. We're projecting 251,667, and we're looking at 251,190. Now, part of the difference is is how many, you know, where you, where do you put some of your gear and training when you get new firemen? I know one year we had what three new firemen. Yeah. Were yep. Trained. So one year we had two firefighters that went through firefighter one, two in hazmat. So that's 150 hours of training at $15 an hour. So that was one. That was last year. Okay, but did I read that right? Last year was 298, and this year is 251, so it really went down in 2020? That's yeah. We can look at what, it, what, what makes that up. I don't recall offhand. You know, and those same numbers should be back here. For it time. also depends on, you know, call volume as well for payroll. I mean, you don't know. Right, but I mean, that's significant. That's 20% or so. Yeah. Less. It depends on how many staff you have in the fire department, too. Yeah, last year we bought the rescue truck. Yep. But that shouldn't be in that column, should it? Mm -hmm. No. <coughs> That, that, total, de total that depends on, you wanted to know about wages, and wages were... Well, just operating in general. Oh, and in know. total, then you're looking, yeah, the, but every so often there's a equipment in the middle, mix. Does that include training? Yes. Yeah. That yeah. Training so is, training, so I can give you a little update on that. So MBFD, Minnesota Board of Fire Training Education, gets money... Th through FSAC, which collects money on your insurance premiums, 0.02%, I believe it is. So that money goes to FSAC. They distribute it to the state teams, Minnesota Board of Fire Training and Education, the State Fire Marshal's Office. And this year we were awarded, I believe, $11,000 for training. So that goes from fiscal year, it's the 21 fiscal year, so uh, Ju July 1st to June 30th of 2021. So we have, I think it's about $11,000 for training with that, and then we have ten thousand dollars in the training in the budget, or eight thousand for budget. So we have about nineteen thousand dollars for training. And every city, every fire department gets that. That's for fire or EMS training. And you can use that for going to conferences, EMS, you know, renewals for your uh, EMRs, EMTs, paramedics, all that stuff. So the training-wise, doesn't cost the city anything, except for payroll. Page 26, we got tw almost $22,000 reimbursed for training. Page 26. 
in 2019. Yeah. I, I'm looking at uh, 2021 proposed minus equipment purchase. The total cost would run about $300,000 for our fire department, and that's, I think it's pretty reasonable. I do. Now, the equipment is on top of that, I, I understand, but still, when you look at the, the basic need, 300000 is pretty cheap. Yeah, I agree with you. I thought that was just what Chip got. Yeah, right. <laughs> I thought you were gonna, I was going to come up here and ask for be a full-timer, because that's what it feels like right now. Just take it out of your petty cash of your yeah. <laughs> have to get you a chair. Huh? Chair? You need a chair? <laughs> no, it's just the amount of time I spend with the fire department in the last six months has been kind of a lot. And by the way, that's about a $6,000 increase over the current year estimate. So that's not much of a change as far as operational costs. Payroll might be down a little bit this year because we didn't have as many calls in April and May. We're down about 30 calls for the year at right now. Kind of was slow, but then it picked up in July, August. So, and then we didn't train as much either. So, so are we looking for a final answer on this today? I would love you to have a final answer or a, you know, a motion to purchase an aerial apparatus. I don't think you'll ever have this opportunity again. So, I was so talking to the chief from Lionel Lakes. We were doing some training yesterday, and they're budgeting for their 2029 replacement of their 105-foot aerial for 2029, $2.45 million. Yeah. So well, I think that answer would be pretty easy to answer. <laughs> they're gonna, they, have, they have to buy it. So, but that's, you know, the increase they're saying is between 7 and 10% a year cumulative increase every year. And would, that's obviously evident with the amount that's going to cost for the engine when we just bought it one five years ago. When is our next scheduled budget meeting? We don't have another, we don't have another one scheduled. Uh, at this point, what we have right now is uh, a plan to approve a preliminary levy at the council meeting next Monday. Um, personally, I'm not sure that you're ready to do that. So if you're looking at scheduling another council meeting, I would do it a week from today with the intention of budget. budget meeting with the intention of approving a preliminary budget. When we get to the budget discussion, I've got some suggestions that can try to get you over the hump and help you with your decision. I would just as soon not make a decision on this ladder truck today. I could make one today. I, I'm. I'm always worried about my homeowner's insurance and the homeowner's insurance of everybody that lives in town. And if they raise the rating, everybody's paying more. And it just seems like it's a better piece of equipment to you know, ultimately save somebody's life if it comes right down to it. Or a firefighter's. Yeah, no, I'm not opposed to it, yeah. but I would, I would really like to have the opportunity to pursue a private conversation before we do that. You do what you have to do, but I, I just sort of do it at the next week. Seems to me that we should have council discussions. A, I'm, being, being, I'm being picky, but the private conversation thing is exactly what we're not supposed to do. I don't know about that. Well, we're supposed to do things as a council. I would. I think we're just spending a lot of time on meetings here. We've had this on topic on two or three meetings. Um, I would make a motion to go ahead and purchase the truck and work with Mike Linus on figuring out uh, what's the best way to finance it. It's clear from everything I've heard that we're going to need it. You can argue about this year, next year, but we need it. We've got to replace E2, and we've got a lot of good reasons to go ahead and get this while we can get it for a reasonable price. None of this money is, you know, none of it's reasonable in that sense, but homeowner's insurance, businesses insurance, those are key things for the city of Cross Lake. We're growing, we're a destination city. People are coming up here to have fun and play, and some of us live here. So I make the motion that we authorize Chip to get the truck. Okay, we got a motion by Andrews. Do we have a second to that motion? I strongly believe it's, it's a, a, an expenditure that 
people don't mind paying tax dollars for. They could need this truck at some point in their life. Hopefully not. But I do think it's, it's part of the process that we have to provide. Firefighting is just like the sewer plant. We've got to keep, keep it in tip-top shape. So yes, I would second that motion. Okay, we've got a second on the motion. Um, is there any other discussion on it? Could I ask a question about sure. the 2012 bond issue? Does that mature? Is that a 10-year bond? Just wondered if our last payment was 2022. It's in 23 and 24. So there's two more levy years for those bonds. Part of that was a refunding bond that was um, for the sewer and for the public works facility. And so this, I believe the sewer bond goes off in 2023. And the- So it was a 12 year bond? No, it was a refunding bond. The original one I think was, I'm not sure what the original term was on the bond. It was issued in uh, 2004, 2000, 2004 range. Yeah, it was, it was a quite lengthy bond. It was for the sewer and it was for the, we, we refunded two bonds in 2012 because um, that's when rates fell. And so there were two outstanding bond issues that were refunded together and combined into one bond. And so right now the levy is about $350,000 a year for the two of them. And it's split between two pieces. One is for the sewer and that's $221,000 a year is the levy for that. And the remainder of that levy goes, that comes out of the general fund. And the payment is shared 53-47% respectively with the county and the city. So we don't levy for the full amount of the bond because the county reimburses us 53% of the bond payment for that. And that payment is due, done in 2024. So between 2023 and 2024, that one's done. So and that, that debt is like 300 and some thousand, 60, 360,000 annually? Yeah, the payment's around 350 annually. Well, 456,000 annually. But we get 100 and, about 115, 120,000 back from the county. And that was listed out in the debt schedule I had sent everyone. Thank you. Got it. So we have a motion and a second. Anybody else want to add anything to it? All in favor of the letter truck? Aye. 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 Okay. And all opposed, aye. Marcia, Mar did you vote? No, I haven't. Um, I'm just not. I wish I'm I had a little time sure, to I'm not check sure a few things about, out too. Um, the year we should purchase it, but you're saying we we don't have another shot at this truck. Not at that price. Because I would like to move it out to 2022 or 24. I was thinking that the bond issue was 12 or was 22 that it was going to be finished. Chip, did you say this truck would come till 2021? Yeah, so this truck will uh, be the second engine. And so the 2024 piece of apparatus that's on the capital outlay would be removed. Marsha, no problem just to say no. I mean, it's not going to change the vote because we have three yeses. So you could just say no. <laughs> I realize that, but I just, I, I want to make sure before I vote that I understand. And so then the debt wouldn't start for this truck until 2022? If this truck doesn't get delivered till 2021, you'd issue the certificate in 2021 and your first payment wouldn't be till 2022? That depends. We've got a what I, I mean, ideally what I'd like to do is issue a, a larger certificate because I can likely get a better rate. Um, 
if we purchase the plow truck, which we've already decided, if we decide to issue certificates for that, we might want to think about not issuing certificates of that from the discussion we had before, because we're getting um, you know, the price down with some help from others. We would need to issue this, the certificate for the fire truck prior to its purchase, because we'd likely have to make a large down payment. I'm not sure what the timing of that would be when it would be built and when it would actually be, be delivered would determine when we would time the certificate and the related payments. So if the truck is built in February and, and it shows up in um, April or June, it's likely the first payment would be the following year. Depending on what kind of deal Chip works out with the manufacturer, they might, they typically want you to buy the chassis before they start working on it. I know the last truck we did that, we had close to, well, you know, well over $100,000 into the chassis. So when you sign the contract, they're looking for a check to get started on it. Yeah. I guess my other thought is, you know, you could add in the sweeper and some of those other capital mm -hmm. project or items that are in next year's budget to the certificate. The other thing, and the, the other thing, um, you know, and that's an iffy thing. If if the fire department does go out to Oregon, um, you know, maybe you want to include in your motion any any reimbursement you get from that uh, trip out there goes toward the purchase of this um, ladder truck. Yeah, if you'd use it to down. reduce the size of the bond issue, yeah. or whatever you did with it. Yep. And again. If we're, if we're, do, we're doing, we, we've got a motion and we've already decided to do the, the plow truck now. So we'll get that done. So the question on the plow truck is, do you want to issue certificates for it or not? Because your net price is going to be in that sub 150 range. You have the ability to pay for it. Um, the other thing you can do is we could look into when we would need to issue the certificate for the fire truck, because you'd likely need to buy the chassis right now and pay for it to get them to going, get them going on it. Then if Chip says they're scheduled for February, you'd issue it next year? I just emailed them. Yeah. So Asking we'd have to work out the timing on that. But just so you understand, if you're going to issue a bond or a certificate or geo debt done for five years for something that's around $1.129 million, as we have listed in the budget, um, the annual payment on that at 2% is going to be around that 230 range somewhere around there. And we get exact numbers once we know what we're doing. Okay, let's take a time out here and finish our motion. Huh? <laughs> let's finish our motion. Yeah. So Marsha, we need you to vote. And then we can... I will vote um, yes. Okay, so motion carries four to one. Could I make a motion to amend uh, John's motion for uh, adding that uh, reimbursement from the state to uh, this ladder truck? That whatever we receive from the, from the state of Oregon would go towards this and reduce the purchase price. And, uh, and that would go towards that chassis. Char, should we do that you're as an amendment or a separate motion? You're shot? taking the old engine out there, not the new one, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, Just, sure. yeah no. <laughs> so is that a motion? Could that be a separate motion? It could be a separate motion. Okay, so se second. So the, just that the money is applied from the Oregon trip towards the purchase. Can, yeah. can so I? So we've got a motion and a second. Go ahead. Can I, I was just wondering, could that be net of expenses that you have to... Correct. You you'll have to take out payroll. You know what I mean. Yeah. Right. If so the guys have basically to get equipment, paid X and proceeds, equipment, yeah, diesel fuel and lunches and hotel, or you make them sleep in the truck. I don't know. They provide lodging and meals. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yep. They provide lodging and exp all that out there, yeah. but we have to get there. Yeah, whatever's left over. Just payroll is basically what you're looking for. I'll second that. Okay. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I have I didn't know I didn't see it on the agenda. Did you want to talk about the CARES Act funding today or do you want to wait? 
CARES Act money? You know, the, I was just curious. Yeah, I mean, I'd, sometime I'd like to have a... Today, or? Sure. We can touch that into item That's seven. And the, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's not on the agenda, so. Can we do that? Sure or not? You want to include let's, it let's put it under number eight, because we were talking as part of the CARES funding and the impact of the budget. Okay, so we're, oh, we got number seven, huh? Review code for tr truck for park. So you'll see um, the quote worksheet in front of you, the base price, the options, and then the government discount off of the state contract. And that totals $35,718.54. And that truck is fully equipped plow and everything we need it for um, other than our plow itself uh, any additional lights we need for plowing safety plowing lights and a communication radio so what I have listed in my proposed 2021 budget was 45 and this um, just the truck is 30 just over 35 and I'm working on getting a quote for um, a plow, which hasn't come back to me yet. So the plow would be on top of this price? Correct. It's not included. Correct. And just from talking with Ted, what he has seen in the past, fully equipped, installed electronics right around 4,200, 4,500. What, what all do you plow with it so I have an idea? What I... What all do you plow with that truck in the winter? The park, um, our safety exits, security exits, and then we help um, public works with other areas. And I, I think we're taking over this parking lot. And we were in charge of, and we were doing the um, fire, the new fire hall to last year. So we've been clearing pretty much three facilities. So it's busy in the winter. Correct. So TJ, how many trucks does the park have now? One. And it's an 08 Chevrolet, 2,500, so it's three-quarter ton. Um, I think it's just shy of 120,000, and it's been plowing its whole lifetime, as far as I know, from 08 till now. And your intention is to keep it? My intention is to keep it, but trade the responsibility of the big workhorse duties to the new truck and keep this um, 08 for our transportation vehicle, and it also has a slip tank for a diesel. So that's why we drive that to Public Works, fill up, bring it back to our shop when we need to fill up our mower or any other piece of equipment that uses diesel. So at the last meeting, one of the reasons for the need for the new truck was two employees, COVID, not being able to drive to a location together. Correct. And now you're getting a crew cab. Again, that reasoning would be in the winter when we carry supplies, we have more space in the back of the or truck. Supplies that would freeze or can't be in the elements. Okay, it seems a little excessive to me for, I don't know what you're carrying and where you're going, but we keep, I mean, I can see the firemen and their packs and whatever, but. A bigger portion, I mean, last year was pretty busy with snowfall. We were working with Public Works quite a bit, clearing roads, and my guys had to have, I mean, we had to clear trees off some certain streets too, so we're doing some other duties with that truck other than just park duties in the winter. Sure, but the crew cab still has got to add seven, 8,000 bucks to the cost of a pickup. And, and even above that, you got to maneuver it around. You got to, you know, it's a longer truck to whatever. I, I don't know that that's the smartest thing to get, and I don't know what the need is. Well, if the council wants me to look into more of a club cab, I can do that. I don't know what the price difference would be, but. Well, I mean, I plow a little bit like you do. When you get a crew cab, you got to stretch it out. It's a little more cumbersome plowing, too. I mean, just a straight cab would probably make more sense for the use that you're doing. So, I mean, that's, 
The price of it isn't bad, but just the practical use of it, I don't know that it's the smartest thing for you to get. Would the council want me to come up with a different truck selection to see what the price difference is and what would be more realistic? I mean, we, we would use the space. Right, right now we're pretty limited, so everything in our current 08 goes in the bed of the truck. Right. I mean, you got, you got chaps. When you're cutting down trees, you got chaps, you get the helmet, you have everything that shouldn't be in the elements that we can fit in the crew cab. I'd like you to look at it, but here, let's see, get, the, get the council's opinion. I guess um, I wouldn't have a problem with uh, you checking on uh, a, a different uh, pickup that's not a crew cab. And you want me to bring that back on Monday? Sure. Okay. The only difference would be then that uh, it's a, st a standard cab instead of a... Yeah. So more of a club cab than and a then crew. On uh, council meeting, we can make a decision whether which one is the best. Or even reasonable. an extended cab or something. A crew cab is, I mean, that's a stretched out unit. It's a little overkill for the use you're going to do. If I was going to buy a POW utility pickup, I would never do that because you got to turn around, you got to back up your visibility. Your, I mean, I just wouldn't do it for a practical, even above the economic standpoint of it, just a practical use. I would just look at the weight of the thing if you're going to plow and the heavy duty aspect of the frame's probably bigger. It's but pretty much the same thing. If it's not a big deal, you can probably get a price. I, I just think, I mean, that's a heck of a buy if you go yeah. into this. You but know. that price would probably be reflected in a right. same thing. And if you've seen Joe driving around, that's pretty much identical to what I have in this, just a different year. My concern about council is I think we're getting down in the weeds too much. I think we're here to make decisions. Um, and I think we ought to take advice of the people who have figured it out. I have no problem with looking at a, a club cab, but I guess my feeling is if TJ or someone else in council says, or someone else on staff has looked at it, thinks it's gonna be best for their uses, and uh, that it's hard for me to go try to second guess their decisions, so. I have no problem with what we're talking about coming back Monday, but come back with some real good reasons why we need the crew cab. But um, I sort of just don't like us trying to second guess people who are the technical people who have got to use the equipment. Into my comment, thanks. Okay, so we don't have to spend a lot of time on this. Do you guys want to do? Get, get the quote and bring it Monday night to the council meeting. Both of them. Okay, will do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Council, I think you're going to see there's only about the three thousand dollar difference in price. But from a regular cap to the crew cap. Well, can I? Did you have something? Can we discuss the COVID, uh, this uh, CARES Act funding a little bit? We're going to do that We're, in number yeah. eight. We just got done with that. That next. That's next. That is next. So it's not really on there, but we just decided to do that. Didn't catch it. Thank you. So the 2021 levy and budget. Let's jump into that. Okay. Would you highlight all changes or anything on here? Yes, I have. In fact, you know, when we talked at our last meeting, um, I made the comment that you know, based on the changes we made on the questions that I received at our last meeting, you know, we could get things to about zero over last year, and we were really close. But before we get into all the details on that, I just wanna talk about just a couple things here. Now, we've had a meeting on August 13th, August 27th. We had kind of a continuation meeting a week ago today. And so we're at September 10th right now. Um, if we're still on schedule to set the preliminary levy at Monday's meeting, we can do that. Um, maybe we can decide at, towards the end of this discussion, if you feel you need another meeting, we could do that next Thursday, um, at which time you would set the lev preliminary levy. Remember, you'd set it at a point where you could come down from, but you can't go up from there. Um, just some of the assumptions we're using. We still have to set that preliminary levy by the end of the month. 
um, our proposed truth and taxation meeting, which we've already approved, is at the regular meeting on December 14th, as a reminder. Um, in this levy, as we, we've discussed, we've got some levy challenges. We've been talking about those for several weeks now. Um, we're not providing any funding to cover any deficit in the utility fund with this budget we're gonna look at in a minute. Um, one of the changes we've made is I got an updated budget from the EDA, the Cross Lake EDA. I put a placeholder in there for 10,000. Um, they didn't spend their money this year. They didn't have a levy this year, so we've been using the funds that they've already had on hand to pay for the, the Blade Act contract and things like that. So to make, their, to make them come out to zero, or as close to zero as I can, um, with things that include like the, the items they're planning to do, we'd need to have a levy this year. So I've made an adjustment for that, of upwards of about 6,000. Now, in this model, we don't, I, have, I did not reflect the, any impact of a sewer rate adjustment. Um, so while we're sitting here, if we do a sewer rate adjustment, we would add about $17,000 plus or minus to the revenue side of things for next year. That's not gonna make a huge difference in this budget. So I'm not concerned about that. Um, we talked a lot about operating expenses when we looked at the fire department. Um, staffing levels are relatively, are the same. Now we had people start at different times at different rates as compared to previous years. And I know TJ's got, gonna have some questions um, next week or this week yet, or next week on uh, staffing. So we're not sure how that's gonna come out yet, so there might be another change with that. Capital expenditures, we spent a lot of time on that. Um, we did not talk today yet about the status of the sewer extension. That's not incorporated into this model at this point. Um, the road budget that the Public Works Commission um, determined is included in here. Um, status of the biosolids project. We talked a little bit about that last meeting. And project timing. You know, I'm still waiting to hear back from the folks at High Tech on what the timing schedule uh, is, gonna look, is going to look like for um, the fire hall. So remember, that's not going to impact your levy, but it will impact your budget because the plan for that is to spend, is to pay cash for it. That's how the original plan was set up back uh, a year ago now of about 1.3 million. We know the cost is going to be significantly more than that. We just don't know what that is at this point. As Soon as we have a number to share with you, we'll put it in the budget and get it out to everybody. But just be aware that is not accounted for in here. Um, we talked a little bit earlier today on, on uh, bond issues when they get paid off. You've all got the schedule on that. Um, we'll talk about this second comment when we get uh, to the next page. We already talked about um, how we're gonna do certificates. We need to figure out the timing of that. One thing that we've talked about for about a year now is, is the, the land behind Andes. Um, when we decided to go forward with the city hall and pay cash for it, for the fire hall portion, you know, the comments were, um, well, I, I'm not sure I can support that. If we're gonna pay cash for this, we might need to rethink that because we don't have a clear plan that's for that property um, for the park. So th stated alternatively, um, other than existing cash or new levy, we don't have a funding source to make that acquisition. Um, it's not something you'd borrow money for. Um, so that's out there. If there's any interest in having, you know, myself and the park director take a further look into that, um, I know there's I know the owner is, is very interested. It has some restrictions on, on how we would develop it. And remember, the land is, is the land, and you're, you would need to spend significant dollars to come up with through your general levy or, or existing funds to pay for that. Okay? Just, so, for, just for a note on that, Mike, I yep. casually asked Jim if he was getting impatient with that yesterday. Yeah. So I, I don't think it's going to go away. It's not going to go away, but it's not, we have to make a decision or it'll be gone tomorrow. 
is my understanding. Is that a fair statement? Okay. Um, so we started out with, with um, these next few pages are where did we start and where are we at right now? Um, so you can tie those back into, into the budget. So I'm just going to go to my summary page here. And I think I've got... I'm going to go to my copy of the budget because I've already flipped the pages. So just let me get caught up to where we are at. I think I flipped the pages. We can read them. There we go. Okay, I do have one minor correction to make on this schedule. If you look up in this column, and we'll talk about this in a minute, this is the column that says here's what our rate changed. When I added in 10000 to the EDA budget, I didn't change this 8 up here to a 2. So when I did my formula auditing, it showed that I, I had, a, had something that wasn't just right. The good news is it didn't change anything other than changing that 8 right there to a 2. The column still totaled the 4552. Five, okay? So you just want to right change that number from an eight to a two, you'll you'll be in good shape. So what I meant talked about earlier is that this model does not provide a provision to make up for any deficit in the sewer fund. It's assuming that this two hundred and thirty thousand dollars that we're showing as a deficit in the sewer is going to be covered by a transfer from the general fund. So there's no provision in here to make that up. So what does that mean? If I go back a page um, to page 8 of your budget, and I'm looking at the shaded column here in gray, what this budget does is it says, okay, I want to get down to a, a number, is, is really how I did it, that, that gets us close to zero. This is what it might look like. It would get you to a tax rate which is a reduction to get you from 30.68% to 28.78%. So what does that mean? That means we, we took, we balanced it with, you know, making cuts in the general fund, whether it was elections or, or other things or uh, contingencies for um, civil defense stirrings or potential storm damage. You know, we just wiped it out. Salt shed, you know, to make, to, to make it fit. Um, if you were to leave the tax rate, the estimated tax rate for 2021, the same as it is today, you would generate about $250,000, $246,000, dollars $250,000 more by leaving the tax rate the same. And what is the same, Mike? What is the... What was the tax rate this year? The tax rate is 30.68%, and that's the rate that's applied towards your tax value to determine how much tax you pay at that rate. So if you go through the state formula and it says, based on the value of your property, if we taxed you at 100% and you paid $100, you would apply this rate to that $100 and you'd pay $30.68 would be how much tax you pay. So. That's a lot of numbers, but the, in the big picture, what it says is it gets you to uh, a change from last year of about zero or just a little less. And so to make the model work, we take $51,000 out of, out of our operations, which we talked about. We add $16,000 for... Uh, um, an EDA levy this year that we didn't have last year, and we have a tax rate of 28.78%. Now again, this does not provide any money to cover any deficit in the utility fund, which we know will occur. The way we've been covering those deficits is, is what we've done in the past too, is remember, um, I think it was 2008, one of the bonds was paid off. Um, the, the sewer plant was, was funded by 
connection charges. And so the connection charges can be used to pay for the operations of the plant, and they were. Um, at that time, they were used to pay off the debt. So we got, uh, this year we got about $26,000 in new connection charges. So we're almost at zero, but we're not going to get that every year. Um, so unless we have money coming from the general fund to cover the sewer fund, it's probably going to run out of deficit, even with setting rates like we did, because we're not covering debt and we're not covering repairs and maintenance. So there's a couple things to consider. If you would like to get to a spot where you said, you know what, I know I've got some changes I need to make in the levy, but I'm comfortable with keeping the tax rate the same, because then I can say, look, it's not my fault being a council member. If I'm a council member saying, look, it's not my fault your property taxes went up, your property taxes went up because your value went up. And you can explain that relationship. But if you subscribe to the thought that's saying, hey, I made promises to people that I want the tax levy to drop by X percent over last year and it didn't, then you've got a problem. Um, so if that gets you over the hump, far enough to say, I'm okay with leaving the tax rate the same. That'll provide me money to pay for any new debt we might issue where I don't have to levy addition, put a placeholder in the levy for it. If you're not comfortable with that, then we need to start thinking about when we, what the timing is for any new debt because you will have Okay, so Chip just handed me a note that says uh, there's no down payment on the truck if we hadn't see the rest of it. Okay, so we don't have to make a down payment. That's good. So what does the accrue 3% mean? Okay, got it. So based on what we just did with the with the fire truck, um, you're going to use all of this for those two new certificates we'll likely issue. Okay? But you wouldn't use it until next year and then probably early 2022, but you'd have to have the money in place before the levy dollars came in anyway, so you probably would have to levy for it, both of them next year, right? Because if your payment is gonna be due in, in February or March on a certificate, your tax payments don't come in till, you know, June and November, you'd already have to have the levy in place for that first payment um, would, be the, would be the challenge. So with the changes that we talked about at our last meeting on the 3rd, you know, moving all these capital things around and, and making those adjustments. That gets you to right here, a 0.83% decrease. It does not provide funding. Now this number would change about $17,000 because I'll go ahead and adjust the revenue on here. I'll, I'll just adjust this up about 4%, which is 52, 2% over 50. Um, but that doesn't solve the issue down here. You still have a deficit. That's all I got. Isn't there, doesn't it make sense that we have to cover our obligations? Absolutely. I mean, isn't there, I thought we talked about that you, you must do that. Yes. So, What, what, what's the levy? Um, percentage? I'm, that, I'm just looking for a number, you know, something that would, if we cover that, what is it? 2%? What do we have to increase over last year? It would be about 6%. 6%? Right, because you'd take 230,768 divided by... The 35? That's 0.83. Yeah. 
divided by, by 4306139. Now remember, let's go back a page here. And I'm back on page 8. I know I'm flipping through these pages quickly. And I'll make this bigger. So if I look, if I look at our 2019 levy, I, you know, this is the stuff we have to levy for right here. These aren't choices. You know, we're bound to, to do those numbers, but those are tied to general obligation bond documents. Okay, so now if I look at the, those same levy numbers this year, and they're similar, but you'll notice they're a little more. It's about $44,000 more if you do the math on it. So $44,000 more in your debt levy this year than last year. And the way we balanced that is we took it out of our capital levy and, and our operating levy for pay 21 over the whole city to make it balance. Now, the good news is I've had questions on, are people paying their taxes? You know, we're in a pandemic, everyone's hurting. Are people current on their taxes? I haven't seen any reduction in that for the first half of 2020. Um, I, I can't speak to what the second half will look like. You know, if, if you thought I'm in good shape and I can get through half a year, you paid your taxes and was no problem. But that same group of people might not have that ability for the second half of the year. You know, and I, I just don't have a feel for that um, until those payments are actually made. That's what I'm afraid of. Um, I do have a couple of questions, though. I'm shocked. I know I asked you for um, <laughs> in an email about some of the stuff. Sure. The consultant fees. That and I responded to that. Yeah, I know you yep. did. You said you were, that the that was budgeted for consultant fees for the uh, the state sales tax. Do we have a consultant on board for the sales tax? At this point, we do not. At this point, we don't even know what the rules we're going to have to follow are. But at some point, we're going to have to, when we have information on that, we're going to have to do something to try to figure out um, how we can support that. Now, we can't use we would use that money to help us get through the process um, once we know what it is. is isn't there a committee working on that or on the sales tax yeah. issue? Yeah, we're, we're at kind of a standstill right now. And I remember back in March, you know, Mayor Nevin, Council Member Andrews, and myself testified at the legislature at the House hearing on sales tax. We got through the first round and then they said, we're done. Um, that was like March um, 8th or 9th, right in that range. Um, then the pandemic, you know, by the middle of March, they said, we're off the table, we're not doing anything with that. They started understanding that we're looking at a huge budget deficit, we're not going to have that in our tax bill this year, and they didn't. But what they did say, is that when it comes back, it'll be more specific and more project oriented, and we'll need to be fairly concise and really specific with how we're using that and for what term and, and how much. Now that's the bad news. The good news is we'll, we should have another shot at it for this next cycle come going into 2022. This would be our next opportunity to do that. But the staff would be putting that, that yeah, information we'd together. Yeah, we'd be putting that a lot together. Remember last time we hired the, we would likely um, come back and say we'd like the, the extension service at the U to do another study for us. We'd like an updated study with current information because by a, at that time it'll be what, three years old? You know, I don't think you'd want to make decisions on old data. Um, we may have some information at that time on the impact of VRBOs with the county, right? Because those will be taxable too. So what did, this, what did the extension service charge for that study? Did they charge us? They charged us $1,000 for it. $1,000. That's where that $1,000 came from in 2019. Yep. That's correct. I'm just having a hard time with 15000 for a consultant for sales tax. What would you like it to be? I don't know. I, I, I thought staff and a committee was taking care of it. I didn't realize that we were 
hiring a consultant? We will be once we get to that point. We just don't know what it's going to cost. We're stopped. We're not doing anything right now with the committee. But I, I just wondered, is, is that what the council had in mind, is hiring a consultant for $15,000 to get the sales tax? I thought it was a committee and staff. I'm, I'm, you I was have not to ask on the, the council. council, so I'm asking what... Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't really recall unless we just wanted to have some available funds in the event we needed it. Well, this is for next year, so mm -hmm. was it the intent to hire a consultant for the well, sales tax, year, or was it the committee to do and staff? Next year, it's a dead year, right? We don't know that yet. Well, it's got to wait till our... Unless we have a special, special election. Well, mm -hmm. I suppose, but that's pretty... Nope, that'll happen. Well, I, I just want to remind you, it's worth at least $250,000 a year. So we're trying to nickel-dime our way out of stuff. I'd gladly take 250000 and I think we, we need to continue to push on with this. Dave, I, I Could, think you... No. I'm just wondering why the 15000 for consultant fees. I am not against taking 250000 in sales tax. Yeah. I, I want it to go through. I'm just questioning the 15000 uh, keep in mind that uh, the House, now I don't know if I read fake news, so I'm going to qualify the statement, but uh, supposedly our, our House has passed a bill that they're going to pass on millions of dollars to all the taxpayers in this state to include an additional sales tax for it is going to hit January 1st. And that will affect us going in for it, I, I fear that it will. But number two, with everybody's uh, state income tax also going up your individual personal tax, which means the business communities across the state are going to go, and all that money is going into Minneapolis and St. Paul. It's not coming out state. And it's already had a reading in the Senate. That's not good news at all, I don't see, for outstate people. Yeah. No, and so, so what we've just talked about is there's, there's quite a bit of uncertainty in what's going to happen. So I would still suggest you put something in there for it. If it's not 15,000, maybe it's more, maybe it's less. But again, right now, you know, our, our goal over the next few days right now is to come up with the with preliminary levy. Um, rather than to, you know, to, to debate every line item. Um, but it's a good point. Well, I guess I don't have a problem with putting something in there. I, I think since we spent 1000 in 2019, that um, if you put 5000 in there for consultant fees, um, I guess I could accept that, but 15000 to me is... I just think when you, you spent only a thousand in 2019 to increase to 15, when it's staff and the extension service, if they do another study, probably will charge you between that thousand and 1500 probably, and you have some room to move with, um, I don't know, putting information out or, or whatever the case may be, but I'd like to see it reduced to five. It's probably pretty likely we won't use any next year, huh? Don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Tom. Are you taking public input? Sure, always. You get kind of a summary of the budget from, from what Mike was giving you. I spent about three hours this morning going through the packet and I made notes on it and the easiest way is just to go page by page on page three, it's got capital items for joint maintenance facility delayed to 2021, 111, 500. That's already been budgeted in 2020, but we're budgeting it again in 2021. And right, and what I mentioned earlier in this discussion today, is based on the decisions we make on these items on page 19, yep. we'll adjust that. But these were the items 
um, that we moved to make those decisions. Okay. Yep. Um, and then adjust for gates reallocated to Perkins Road minus fifty five thousand. What are what are the gates and? And we talked about that uh, last summer when we we were talking about how to fund Perkins Roads. We determined we did not need the gates for the public works facility. They were looking at a different form of electronic gate. Is that correct, Ted? So we took them out. Sure. It was the county's wish to secure the facility down there. So they were going to, and because of police and everybody coming and going a lot, they were going to put automatic gates on one of the entrances to the shop. After the, we did a, a lot of reviewing, and that was the initial to put the 55 in, after a lot of reviewing between us and the county, it just wasn't feasible to do. So then we reallocated that money towards the Perkins Road at that oh. time. Okay, I understand now. <laughs> Yeah, so then it's we, coming from two different departments. Yes. It was a public works. Thing yep, and then so, Tom, what we did, just so you know, I okay. believe what we did is we said it wasn't clear whether or not we were going to do those gates yep. in 2021. So on the budget model prior to this one, we had it in there, and we said, well, if we're not going to do it, we should take it out. So okay. we, we pulled it out. So you won't see it in you know, right. this latest model. So I, that's how we accounted for the change in it. Then on, on page 16, under siren upgrades and general government, that 25 and 25, um, and I think there's, I know it wasn't a unanimous decision to do that capital fund, and I think there's some confusion on, um, I think Marsha did it for 40 some years and I did it for 33 years. Instead of calling it a capital, um, what it is is a designated reserve fund. Right. And, and within that, at the end of each year, you know, you can, if you didn't spend the money, you would put it in that reserve account. And then under that account, you could have sub accounts for tractors or fire trucks or whatever you're spending money on. And, and I think that's how you did it. And that's, that's how I did it. And that's how we do it today. Okay. That so you're changed. keeping track of, because as yes. I go through this, I'm going to say this should be a carryover into that designated account. So if we're not spending uh, the money on the sirens or that general government, are we going to carry that money over or is that just going back in the general fund or where is that going? We're not going to carry that over. The intent, as my understanding, is to put that towards the um, overages on the city hall project. We have $179,000 of expense that was not in the contract that we paid for to date, and that okay. money has to come from somewhere. Okay. So either reserve money and spend down other reserves. You're just you're basically just swapping um, undesignated for designated at that point. Okay. Um, and so we, we took both of those items out. Yeah. Then on page 18, I think it was two meetings ago, I specifically asked Chip if the radios and the PPE and the EMS supplies could come under COVID, and he said yes. Those dollar amounts are still um, in your budget on page 18. That's so correct. So if they're being paid for this year by COVID, they haven't approved. They haven't been approved yet. So we also stated at that time, once those are approved, we'll adjust the budget accordingly. So go ahead, Chip. Twenty-two million. I can't. If it's in my budget, I can't care exactly. I know, and that's why I'm saying uh, take it out of next year's budget. Yep. And we also have the same issue with the park truck. After you're done. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Then on page nineteen. All of those in the, the blue column, um, they're budgeted this year, but they're budgeted again next year. Are those going into the dedicated reserve account? Yes, they are. And they're also reflected on the front page, on page uh, eight of that same document, showing that we already have those funds in place, so we're not going to budget for them. We're not going to levy for them. 
that's where we got into the discussion on what's included in the levy and what is not, and what are we carrying over, and, and what are we reassigning. Okay. So we are tracking those things. I'm just, I'm just following this, and it, they're listed under 2021. That's why I'm questioning them. Yeah, because we'll, we list them under 2021 because we're going to spend the money. And what I'm looking at is how much, what do we need? I want to know when I do a budget, how much are we going to spend? What, am, what are we going to ask the council to approve checks for, and what's the mayor and myself going to sign? And then I look at where is that money coming from? Is it coming from levy? Is it coming from existing resources? Is it coming from new debt or other? And that's what we've tried to figure out on that. And so if we levied for something and didn't spend the money, absolutely we'll reserve it and list those items out, but we're not gonna levy for them again in the next year. We're gonna reflect that we've already got those funds and we don't need to double yep. up on them. That's, that's what I wanna verify. Yep. Um, Okay, and then on page 23. Um, I'm really there's, glad there's only 42 pages in this. There's 3,000 budgeted for the senior meals table. Um, is that being purchased this year? No. So. It was on its rotation to get replaced, but I checked in with the distributor, distributor, and they said it will last a few more years, so we took that out. Yeah. Okay. And so any reserve for that will depend on whether we need those funds to cover the balance on the truck or not. Okay. So we'll make that adjustment when we have that answer probably on Monday. Um, the patio shade feature on page 25, there's 4,000 and that's coming from donations. It states donations um, mainly because if we need more funding, we would go for donations, not affect the budget. Okay, and then under um, sewer, down there on uh, biosolids, you've got 150,000 budgeted and you've spent 295. Will that be put in a designated reserve account? That I think at the public works yeah. meeting, they were, they were saying maybe we do some engineering and you know, I'm just saying, if you got 149,000 left from this year's budget, put it in a designated reserve account for the biosolids. And yeah, we can do that, or we can use it to cover the projected 230 deficit. We don't know what that number is going to be yet, but that's not an item we would have levied for. Um, when you look at the sewer fund, because there is no levy in the sewer fund for operations, the assumption is you're paying for the expenditures of the sewer fund either through the operating revenues generated or any new debt issued because there is no levy for operations in the sewer fund. So any of the expenses Well, there, there isn't, but yeah. if, if you're covering the deficit in the sewer fund through the general fund, if you've got 150,000 of an expense listed under sewer, um, that's going into the overall budget and that's being covered, that's increasing the deficit that's being covered by the general fund. Not if we don't spend it. Okay. So we'll figure that out at the end of the year when we know what those numbers are. I think at the end of 2019, um, because we got connection charges to cover things, we were only about $36,000, dollars $37,000 in the hole on that. Okay. So we came out all right. So what we'll do with that is if there's money left over in there, if the operations are positive, by all means, um, we'll use that for operations. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect any, any huge bonus in there. And, and I think where the confusion is on that is the source of revenue to pay for that is either new debt or operations. It's not tax levy. And so what we're doing at the end of the year is we're saying, how did our sewer fund work on an operating basis? We pull the debt out because we're tracking that separately. And we said, how did we do during the year? Are we in the hole or are we not in the hole? If we're in the hole, um, $50,000, we make a recommendation to say, 
we need to transfer fifty thousand dollars over there if okay. we're you know seventy five thousand dollars positive then we'd have an opportunity to say hey for the first time ever we're positive um, what should we do with it then we, then we could make that decision to reserve it for for different things but I'm not expecting us to be not in the hole at the end of the year okay on that. Yeah, we still have one lift station to go, so. Yeah. On page 26, under police training reimbursement, um, you had almost 5,000 reimbursed in 2019. You've got a budget of 2,000 for a revenue this year and 2,000 next year. I'm just kind of going back, looking at 19, and it'd help if there was 17 and 18 so you could see a trend. But both the police training reimbursement, you received almost 5,000, you're only budgeting 2,000. Police state aid in 2019, you, you received almost 46,000, you're only budgeting 33,000 in a revenue. And on fire training reimbursement in 2019, you received almost 22,000, and you're only. Uh, budgeting five thousand dollars as a revenue it just I'm looking at at 2019 compared to you know what's being budgeted and it seems like it's you're a little on the short side for the revenue in the budget you want to address the training last year chip on the fire So 2019, we spent 21,000. Is that what you're saying? Right. This is a revenue. This is a revenue. So that's uh, that must be the that's state the MBFT state. reimbursed uh, training expenses plus source well. Yep. And then our budget. Yeah, I mean, and the MBFT, it, it, the amount we get from the MBFT changes every year depending on the fit, the amount that comes in, if it's a biennium or not. So this year we're getting 200 dollars per firefighter, fiscal 20. We had eighty-four dollars per firefighter, so it, it fluctuates every year. But the fiscal year for this, we go off the state fiscal, so ju July one to June thirtieth. So that money is different; gets spread out throughout the year differently than our budget time frame. Okay, but but is it I that big a difference? Twenty-two thousand versus five thousand. Uh, let's see, twenty twenty. Yeah, so so first half of twenty twenty. I didn't have any money to use. It was $84 per firefighter. And that was from last July, July 19 to January 1st, I used up all my money. Okay. So then from now, now we're in a new cycle and I've actually submitted, I mean, some training uh, reimbursements. So now from here until next July, we have $10,000 to use. So the revenue is gonna be coming up again. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. This year you budgeted five thousand. Now again next year you're is that, only budgeting is, is 5, that revenue or expense? That's this is revenue. Yeah, we because I you don't I won't know we don't know until the, my uh, the budget meeting for the MBFT was August three weeks ago for for FY twenty one even though it was already two months into the fiscal. Yep. What was in two thousand eighteen then? Two thousand eighteen was one oh five, and then the year before that it was two hundred. I mean the total revenue that you got for fire training was it twenty some thousand? Or is I don't remember. I suppose we could find it in the other budgets. But I can look it up. And for like the the police state aid, Eric, isn't that based on officers? I'm not sure. Do you mean as far as reimbursement? Yeah. Training, yep. It is.
new person. Right. Okay. Uh, so every five years, we will get up to five hundred dollars uh, per officer or best for person from the state. Okay. Then on page thirty, um, under audit and accounting. In 2019, it was 27,000. Um, I'm assuming you've paid this year's audit, and in 2020, that was 26,000, and you're budgeting 32,000. I think that might be a little, little heavy on the expense side. You know, you could probably drop that a couple yeah, thousand. Yeah, we still have our uh, valuation to do with the Hilde company for the for OPEB. We'll be doing that probably in December, November or December. Okay. And then under legal fees labor, there's $10,000 budgeted this year and, and 10,000 budgeted again next year. You haven't used any of it this year and I thought you said there was no union contracts this year. Um, they expire at the end of next year, I think is the next contract. Yeah. Okay. We, we so I guess my question then is, if if you're not going to spend any of that ten thousand that um, was levied and included in this year's budget, you could put that in a designated reserve account for uh, legal labor and remove the ten thousand from next year's budget. Or we could use it to offset. Uh, because I'm not up to $179,000 well, yet. Yeah, but yeah. It, you know what's so confusing, and I don't think anyone on the council uh, can follow it either. You know, all these things that may get transferred may not, and you say, well, they'll just go to offset. But there's no there's no real accounting for it unless you're, you know, transferring these things into a reserve account that's either dedicated or undesignated, and I don't know how the council is keeping track of that stuff. That's why I made a motion. And your motion was probably, like I say, it was confusing because it came out a capital project and it should have been established a designated reserve for future expenses that when Which things get transferred, they, they get put in that account. Same difference. No, they're quite different. And I'm not trying to pick on planning and zoning, but um, as far as wages, um, if you take the six months of um, 2020 and double it, you're at 115,000. You had 121,000 budgeted this year and about 125,000 budgeted next year. Is there a $10,000 increase in staff wages? No. Well, that's what it's showing. On page 32, um, ordinance codification, you've got 5,000 budgeted this year. Um, you spent 1,800. You've got another 5,000 budgeted next year. Is whatever is left in that going to get carried over? And do we you have spent five? close to four, between three and four thousand dollars through today. The numbers you're looking at are through June. The reason we use a half a year is because it's easy for people to double things rather than to use eighty percent or seventy-five percent. Yeah. Well, I, I realize I that, we'll, but it, I don't know if we'll use the full five thousand dollars budget yet. Now we do have an ordinance change coming up. Is that correct, Shar? Yep. We're looking at, uh, we have a request from uh, the gentleman that takes care of the um, whitefish lodging tax for some changes, so that'll be included in that. Yeah. So there are but things I'm, that are coming You up. know, what I'm looking at is in 2019, you spent $976. The first half of 2020, you've spent a little over 1800 out of a $5,000 budget. You know. Do you we need just 5,000 in next year's budget is my question. And then... Well, we don't know what our changes are going to be. You know, if we have any more discussion on assessments, 
and we change ordinance related to that, we'll eat that up pretty quick, Tom. Yeah. Safety program equipment. Um, you've got 10500 budgeted this year. You haven't spent any of it. And you've got another 10500 budgeted for next year. If you're not going to spend it, that could be put in the designated reserve account and remove the 10500 from next year's budget. Well, we won't have COVID funding potentially next year to pay for some of those safety things either, so... Um, under fines and fees reimbursements, 2019 you didn't have anything, and this year you have 6,000 budgeted. You, you haven't. If you look further down that page, you'll see the accounting for it has changed. Um, we have a contract with the Crowing County Sheriff for a fixed fee. It's just on a different line item. If you look further down on that same page, you'll see a $6,000 expenditure last year and no budget for it going into this current year. Okay, so that covers that. Um, I had the same question as Marcia. A consultant fee of 15000 that was put in this year's budget and 